Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome back to Jane Austen July. Today I wanted to have a little bit of a chat about books that you might enjoy if you like Jane Austen. So my original plan for this video had been to do a video about classics that you might enjoy if you like Jane Austen. One of the reasons why I wanted to make this video is because I know a lot of people who really love Jane Austen but don't read very many other classics at all. But then I came up with a list of authors who I thought you might enjoy if you like Jane Austen. And I realised that all of them were Victorian with the exception of one. So this is mostly going to be a video about Jane Austen and the Victorians with one other 20th century later writer that I think you might like if you like Jane Austen. But there we go. Even in Jane Austen July I couldn't have a video about the Victorians. Do you think that you can really really see how a lot of Victorian authors were influenced by Jane Austen and her novels. So I definitely wanted to have a chat about Jane Austen and the Victorians. Before I go on to talking about the Victorians I do want to mention one other classic writer who I think that you might enjoy if you like Jane Austen and that is Barbara Pym. Barbara Pym is a 20th century writer who I think is really really great. I have only read this book Excellent Women but I loved it and I think if you like Jane Austen you will like this because it very nicely blends a kind of engaging, calm, sometimes romantically driven plot with underlying social criticism in a very Jane Austen-esque style and it also has a good blend of kind of humour and emotional poignancy. This follows a woman called Mildred who is considered by everyone to be very very nice and very very good and people often take her a bit for granted and what happens when she kind of gets somehow caught in the middle of the marital crisis of her new neighbours who are much younger and more glamorous than her. In fact in the introduction to this Alexander McCall Smith talks about how similar Barbara Pym is to Jane Austen and how both of them kind of look at big issues in society through very very small domestic dramas um, and that's one reason why I think if you like Jane Austen you will definitely enjoy Barbara Pym. But on to the Victorians. What I have done is gone through each of Jane Austen's main six novels and picked out two Victorian novels I think you would enjoy if you like that particular Jane Austen novel or the deal with potentially similar themes or have interesting setups etc. Some of them I think are more closely linked than others but yes I'm quite excited to go through this list. So we'll start off with Sense and Sensibility and there are two books I would definitely recommend that you read if you like Sense and Sensibility. Both of them I think have a lot in common with Sense and Sensibility especially in terms of the kind of central sisterly relationship. The first is The Small House Allington by Anthony Trollope. I will link down below my individual review of this book from my Barsetshire Week. Now this is the fifth book in the Barsetshire Chronicles by Anthony Trollope so you have to read the other four before you get to this but it's so excellent and I think it has some things in common with Sense and Sensibility. We follow two sisters Belle and Lily Dale. They live with their widowed mother and they live in a small house near a big house with relations who are much wealthier than them and they are kind of struggling for money though fairly high class in society. That is kind of the setup similarities to Sense and Sensibility you can see in terms of the sort of family social position and the relationship between the two sisters and in fact I would argue that Lily Dale is similar to Marianne in some senses a bit more impulsive a bit more emotional whereas Belle Dale is much more similar to Eleanor in terms of being sensible and liable to bottle up her emotions you can see the similarities between Sense and Sensibility there and there are a lot of other similarities between Sense and Sensibility too in lots of glorious ways but I like the ending of this more than the ending of Sense and Sensibility and I think it follows some Sense and Sensibility plot lines but does very very different things with them in a glorious glorious way. If you like Sense and Sensibility or even if like me you enjoy it but you don't think it's perfect I think you would find this a really really interesting read. And then I would also like to recommend George Moore's drama in Muslin, a slightly later and Irish Victorian read and one that I really really enjoyed. This also looks at the relationship between two sisters and many many people around them and their kind of romantic relationships. We have Alice and Olive Barton and again you can see a kind of similar Eleanor Marianne dynamic between them. Alice is more sensible and Olive is super romantic, desperate to fall in love. This book is set in Ireland in the 1880s so there is a lot of kind of political strife going on at the time and on the one hand it feels very very Jane Austen-esque and the mother's trying to constantly get her daughters married and everybody's looking out for a husband and there's a lot of social drama but also then every now and then people fire guns through the window so yeah. Really really great though, you should definitely read this one. Moving on to Pride and Prejudice I have two other books to recommend you which have a kind of similar to a certain extent romantic plotline to Pride and Prejudice. The first of these is of course The Amazing North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell which I do like to fondly refer to as Pride and Prejudice and Mills or Pride and Prejudice and Industrialization. This book is set in 
the fictional town of Milton, which is based on Manchester, and looks at what happens when a young woman called Margaret moves from the rural south to the industrial north. The love story in this is very like Pride and Prejudice, and not simply in terms of the bare bones of kind of meeting first impressions being bad and things changing from there. Like, if you broke down just the plot of this love story, it maps pretty similarly onto Pride and Prejudice, even in terms of like a similar Lydia-esque plotline coming in too, to a certain degree. But this book also has a lot of other things going for it. It has brilliant social criticism on industrialization. It has subplots to do with strikes and workers within industrial Milton slash Manchester and how kind of industrialization and the rise of factories changes people's lives and also the differences between North and South of England at the time. It's absolutely brilliant like my second favourite book ever and just incredible. And while we're on my favourite books of all time, let's also recommend my first favourite book of all time, Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens. Now, this has a lot of plot lines in and there's only one which I think bears some similarity to Pride and Prejudice, but I do think it's worth looking at the kind of Bella Rokesmith plot line and seeing how interestingly that might map on to a similar Pride and Prejudice plot line in terms of, as I spoke about before, kind of first impressions and how they change. Although of course Bella is quite a different character to Lizzie, she also, like Lizzie, kind of grows and changes over the course of the book. Next, Northanger Abbey. Now, if you like Northanger Abbey and you find gothic stuff interesting in 19th century literature, I want to recommend two Victorian books, both by the same author, J. Sheridan Le Fanu, who is one of my favourite gothic authors of the 19th century, a really, really brilliant writer and brilliant, like Jane Austen, at creating atmosphere and at kind of playing with and adjusting tropes. Camilla is a fascinating novella about vampires, which if you are interested in the kind of thing Catherine Morland is interested in, I think you would find curious, especially because the book kind of looks at isolation and sort of great houses and things like that. But moreover, I would recommend Uncle Silas by J. Sheridan Le Fanu, which I kind of prefer, and the more I think about and the further it gets from having read it, the more I, I love it. It's a really, really fascinating book, and in many ways I think you can view some similarities between the main character and Catherine Morland. The character of Silas is very, very interesting, and I think you can see some similarities between the character of Dudley and the character of John Thorpe in Northanger Abbey. If you like Northanger Abbey, Uncle Silas is a Northanger Abbey in which Catherine Morland maybe isn't wrong to conjecture all the things that she does, if you see what I mean. It's definitely, definitely worth a read. Then on to Jane Austen's Mansfield Park. If you like Mansfield Park, I have two other Victorian books to recommend you, both of which I think deal very, very interestingly with kind of similar characters to a certain extent to Fanny. The first one I would recommend is Little Dorrit by Charles Dickens. Now, I don't think there are many sort of plot similarities in common, but I think the kind of central love story and the central heroine are quite similar. Amy, the title character of Little Dorrit, is quite similar in many ways to Fanny. Both Amy and Fanny are quiet and hard-working, they are physically small and weak but emotionally very very strong and both of them kind of go through very very powerful kind of unrequited loves for people who view them chiefly as friends. And I think that's a very interesting similarity between them and if you enjoy Fanny's character development and the kind of love story in Mantle Park and her as a character I think you will definitely find Little Dorrit an interesting read. Hello this is Katie from the future. Since I filmed the rest of this video I have been listening to Mantle Park on audiobook and the more I listen to Mantle Park the more I think of another book, another Victorian book that is better to recommend in the place of the one I originally chose. So I'm gonna instead recommend Wives and Daughters which I think has a lot of really interesting similarities to Mansfield Park. I love Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. It is one of my favourite Victorian books. It's an absolute brilliant read and it follows a young woman called Molly and her stepsister Cynthia and various romantic entanglements and social entanglements and family drama including their relationship with a family who live nearby called the Hamleys of which there are two sons. So one of the ways in which I think it compares really interestingly to Mansfield Park is that I think Molly and Fanny have quite a lot in common and also that Cynthia and Mary Crawford have quite a lot in common although Molly and Cynthia's relationship is very different to the relationship between Fanny and Mary Crawford. Roger and Edmund are not that similar and Osborne and Tom are not that similar but the kind of young younger son, older son dynamic, the themes of kind of parental expectations and the kind of scheming of other potential individuals about oh what would happen if an elder son would die and, and the property would go to the younger son who's nicer. The similar kind of schemings and thoughts throughout both books which are quite interesting and also there is a big kind of sort of jealousy unrequited love plotline in both that works really really well. Yeah, I just think there's quite a lot of similarities between Mansell Park and Wives and Daughters and I've been thinking about this constantly as I listen to Mansell Park. So if you like Mansell Park, I would recommend very much Elizabeth Gaskell's Wives and Daughters. 
back to Katie from the past. And if you like Emma by Jane Austen, I would like to recommend Miss Marjorie Banks by Margaret Oliphant. Margaret Oliphant is a really enjoyable Victorian writer, and in fact I think if you like Jane Austen you will like Margaret Oliphant. I don't think she's quite as perfect and brilliant and talented as Jane Austen, but I do think she's a really great and really interesting writer, and there are some books by hers I've absolutely loved. I really enjoyed her book Miss Marjorie Banks, but now Miss Marjorie Banks is kind of like Emma, if Emma didn't have a Mr Knightley, I suppose. She likes to matchmake everyone around her. She also takes great pride in her position within society and as kind of being a household where lots of people like to come and spend their time and also like Emma she lives alone with her father and kind of takes it upon herself very very much to take care of her father. I think she is very very similar to Emma personality wise and indeed there are quite a lot of similarities throughout the book. Definitely one I would recommend, it's really really good fun. And also if you like Emma I would like to recommend Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. In general just if you like Jane Austen I think you would probably like Elizabeth Gaskell but if you enjoy the character of Miss Bates in Emma, you ought to read Cranford because it's like a whole book full of Miss Bates and it's glorious. Not every character in this is precisely like Miss Bates, but there are a lot of characters in precisely her situation, kind of impoverished gentlewomen struggling to get by, and a lot of them do like to chatter on rather as Miss Bates does. So definitely if you enjoy the kind of Miss Bates plotline in Emma, you will enjoy Cranford. Finally, Persuasion. Now I found this a little bit harder to think of kind of similar Victorian books with similar plots, but I do have two I would like to recommend if you like Persuasion, more for the kind of naval connection and the look at kind of the influence of the navy in society at that time than actually in terms of the love story. And the books which, though written in the Victorian period, are set at the time of Jane Austen. The first is The Trumpet Major by Thomas Hardy, set a very very similar time to Jane Austen, set during the Napoleonic Wars and kind of looks at the role of the navy and press ganging and also the kind of great fear of immediately being invaded by France, like generally everyone thought they were about to be invaded by France like any second. It's a really really powerful love story as well, sad in many ways, but also just really really well done and definitely one I would recommend. And then there's also Sylvia's Lovers by Elizabeth Gaskell, another one that looks at kind of the role of the navy in kind of turn of the century, early 19th century Britain and the role of the Napoleonic Wars and the effect that it had on people's lives. Obviously that's something that's more kind of in the background of persuasion than a really important point, but I do think both of these are books that you would enjoy if you like Jane Austen. So I think those are all the books that I wanted to recommend today. Please let me know down in the comments if you have any other suggestions of Victorian or earlier or later writers that you might enjoy if you like Jane Austen, and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.